Hello and welcome to KnowledgeBank.pro. I'm super excited to kick off the series on data persuasion today. Uh, this is going to be a first in hopefully a long row of videos. Today we're going to discuss basic concepts and definitions so that we can uh, put together a framework for all of the future content uh, regarding data persuasion. The older I get, the more I realize that uh, our framework of values and uh, motivation is often so much uh, not so much based on our experiences and learnings, but rather on how persuasive were some of the individuals who took their knowledge, experience, and time motivation to persuade us to create and instill our values and to motivate us. You might say, Andre, this is a really cynical view of the world, but I don't think it takes too much effort to see that I'm actually right. Look around. Everything around you is trying to persuade you to take a certain position or to act in a certain way. I'm going to be honest. I'm not smart and or wise enough to tackle the entire persuasion as a topic. However, I am somewhat of an expert when it comes to being persuasive with data. So I decided that it would be useful uh, for you guys to uh, learn some of my thoughts about data persuasion. And um, I said it, I decided to create a set of uh, videos, lectures uh, about how to tell a story to your audience in the most persuasive way using a business intelligence set of tools. Generally speaking, we have three ways to present our ideas and uh, to tell our story to our audience. Number one is a report. Number two is a dashboard. And number three is a pitch or a study. Let's examine all three of those and see which one of them lends itself better to be persuasive in terms of a presentation. The first, we will talk about the reports. A report is a data presentation put together to answer a set of predetermined questions. So for example, if I ask, what is the weather like in Chicago? Then we could put together a set of charts and tables to accurately answer this question. As you can see on the slide, usually a report is narrowly focused. Usually it has a very strong time component, so it's a snapshot in time. Usually a scope of the report is limited to one or few data sources. Usually a report would be pretty detailed, so we would provide all of the necessary uh, level of information to get the uh, information that uh, the user audience is looking for. And reports typically are not very interactive. What is a dashboard, you say? Well, dashboard is a type of data presentation that is designed to consolidate a wide array of data sources, distill all available information into a set of key performance indicators, and provide a user with a way to quickly assess the health of his or her business, and also to highlight the area that requires immediate attention. These are some of the characteristics uh, common to a good dashboard. Number one, it's broadly focused. It's, un, it's not unlikely or not unusual to see things like finance, HR, R&D, sales and market share, macroeconomic indicators, all within one dashboard. Typically, dashboard will be sourced out of multiple data sources. Usually, dashboards begin at a high level with some drill down capability. And a lot of times, dashboards are very interactive. Now, I assume you're very familiar with what the report and the dashboard is, whether you like my definitions or not. You might be a little bit curious about what is a pitch and or study. A pitch and a study is a type of a data presentation that is uh, from the very inception designed to elicit a desired reaction from the audience. You could think of a, a commercial, for example. Some of the characteristics of a pitch or presenting a study are the following. Usually, as I said before, it's built to persuade. It's audience specific. Uh, it's situational. It has very limited shelf life, means that presentation that makes sense at one point of time may make absolutely no sense at another point of time. And it has very low interactivity. Uh, typically, when we say that something has low interactivity, that means it's very structured. Basically, when we want to be persuasive, we want to be in control of the flow and the structure of the presentation. Obviously, given the way I define those three types of presentations, it's very clear that picture study type uh, of data presentation 
that has the biggest uh, potential to be persuasive. Now, this is the most important part of this video. Have you thought about uh, the most efficient and effective ways to uh, integrate my experience on data persuasion? I decided that I need to formulate a three eyes postulate of data persuasiveness. And the postulate goes like this. The data presentation is not inherently persuasive if it does not meet the following three requirements. The presentation has to be one, intuitive, b, insightful, and three, impelling. Let's go the three of these one by one and make sure that I drill into each one of them. And first, let's talk about what it means to be intuitive. We have to assume that the audience will have certain familiarity with the intended subject of the presentation. Therefore, the presentation must not contradict with this intuition. With that in mind, the following questions are good to consider whether the presentation is intuitive. Number one, is it relevant? Does it use credible data sources? Does it employ applicable metrics? And does it use appropriate lenses or dimensions for the analysis? Now, for the purposes of this video, I'm just gonna cover the basic concepts and definitions. I'm not gonna go too deep into these and provide a lot of examples. What I will do for now is just to frame them out so that we have the point of reference. And in subsequent videos, we will be drilling into all of those and I'll be providing a lot of different examples and considerations and uh, discussions about each of the points made in this presentation. The next I in data persuasiveness postulate is insightfulness. Is the presentation insightful? And uh, your presentation must be intellectually stimulating. And that means that the presentation must show either relationships between cause and effect, uncover unusual relationships between entities or metrics, show contradiction with intuition, or highlight the lack of data. Again, in subsequent videos, we will go through a lot of different content and we'll have a lot of discussion of whether a particular story chart or presentation is intuitive, insightful, and so forth. So uh, please come back for more videos uh, if this is interesting for you. Now, I'm not gonna lie, the only reason I use the word impelling is because I was looking for the word that starts with an I. English being my second language, I didn't even know what that word meant, but I was lucky to find a definition, which you could see at the bottom of the slide. So uh, imp to impel means to drive or urge forward, press on, incite, or constrain to action. And once I read the definition, I thought this was spot on, this is perfect. So uh, your data presentation from its inception must have an objective of persuasion. Such objective can be either active or passive. What does it mean for a object to be active? Active would typically do the following. Call to action, and action could be spend dollars, spend your time, click on my links, conduct some sort of activity, or as simple as just show potential. Here's an opportunity, here's an area of improvement and so forth. Passive objectives are actually very common and you may not even realize a lot of times that that is um, the objective of the presentation or commercial or anything like that. So a passive objective is to invoke an emotional reaction, to shock you, to make you feel good, or to establish credibility. A lot of times you will sit through a pitch uh, for the whole reason to think that the person who is doing a pitch is qualified to advise, to provide some sort of services for you, or do anything similar to that. Now, in my three eyes postulate, um, I, I outline the three components. And what you have to do uh, is to think about those three components from the very beginning. As you start putting together your deliverable, your presentation, everything that you do, every chart that you drop on the canvas has to be thought through those three lenses of being intuitive, um, insightful, or impelling. Now, when you're done with the presentation, you have to conduct the two optional but very important checks, the check of ethics and the check of aesthetics. What happens when your presentation is persuasive but not ethical? That doesn't mean that it breaks laws or is morally objectionable. From our perspective, an unethical data presentation just means that it's being manipulative. So when we talk about ethics of the data pers uh, persuasiveness, uh, we don't talk about it in, a t in the context of the source or quality of data or even the data persuasion objective. Instead, 
we will call the presentation unethical from the data persuasion perspective if it does not meet the following must criteria. The data presentation must not rely on metrics with misleading or contextual definitions. It must not withhold insight that conflicts with or contradicts with the persuasion objective. Must have adequate levels of details and scale. Must provide relevant time range and context. Must compare local and global context when possible. I know I uh, said that I'm not going to get too deep into the details, but just to give you an idea, if I'm doing a sales presentation and I'm showing that my sales are going up, which would be the local context, but at the same time, I'm not showing what's happening with the market share. So for example, if the entire category is uh, experiencing explosive growth, right? So I uh, think of the early period of coronavirus where everybody was buying toothpaste and toilet paper. So I could say, hey, uh, I sold a lot of toilet paper. I must have done really well. Well, guess what? The entire toilet paper category did amazing, right? So you have to compare and contrast the local context. What is it that I did with the global context? What happened in the industry overall uh, for my presentation to be ethical? Aesthetics. Aesthetics is a little bit controversial. I'm sure a lot of people will not agree. But I think that even though aesthetics is often considered the most important feature of a presentation, in reality, I think it's very audience specific. I argue that aesthetics is only important with an audience that's either disinterested in your topic or is not very enlightened with respect to storytelling acumen. Unfortunately, when aesthetics is important, it's usually the most important thing that you have to worry about in your pitch. Now, when you're dealing with an audience that is deeply vested in the topic that you're trying to cover, they might not care about the colors or the charts or the branding or about anything else going on. Think about a company that's going out of business because there's something happening with demographics and they commissioned the study to do the research and the, the study has provided some amazing insight. I'm sure the CEO or CMO of that company would be happy to get the insight and learn from the study in just about any format. Uh, so the colors and the charts and all this other superficial stuff may not be as important for them. However, generally speaking, even in a letter case, your presentation still must meet the basic expectations of the audience, including storytelling, best practices, branding, layout designs, and so forth. Now I know that this was a lot of theory uh, and maybe possibly new theory for some of you guys. Do not worry. Uh, what I do is I have documented this entire lecture on my blog post. The link will be in the description. So uh, if you want to get into details or kind of refamiliarize yourself with all these concepts and definitions, go ahead to my blog post and you can read my article and get all of the definitions and bullet points there. And I recommend that you uh, familiarize yourself pretty well with this concept because uh, from now on, every now and then, a couple times a week maybe, I will be posting a video where I'll be either discussing a, um, a story or a pitch from a, an established or maybe a less established source. Also, I will be putting together my own data stories and data sets where I will be highlighting and driving the point on of what um, visualization is unethical, what I think is intuitive or not intuitive, and uh, how do we provide insight using the tools that we have in Power BI and so forth. I'm really excited about taking you guys on this journey with me. So hope to see you back soon and hope you guys will find this topic to be very interesting. Thank you. Bye.